Okay, so um, we have a, a, a Python script that is now um, starting to do some interesting things, right? It's creating quad polylines on a surface. That's not something you can just natively do inside of Grasshopper. Um, so we're developing our own custom logic. And um, let's take that one step further and say that really the goal here is that we want to draw polylines on a surface, but we want to be able to say, you know, sometimes I want to create quads, and then also in other conditions I might want to define a triangle, right, uh, as a polyline. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a polyline based on a conditional that says that the um, uh, that defines which type we're, of polyline we're actually going to draw. Right, so here's a, a quick representation of what that might look like. If we say that the type that we're asking for is a quad, we'll get the result on the left. If we ask for a triangle, we'll get the result on the right. Right, now this is useful because very frequently you want to take a surface that's curvy and turn it into something that you can make out of flat material, right? Great opportunity for triangles. Other times your surface might be um, only slightly curvy and you can make it out of quads and the deviation is not going to matter. Right? So there's an application where this might come in and the idea here is that we want to define simply do we want this type or that type and then give me the results. Right? So we know that if we walk through a dictionary of points the keys are pretty straightforward to get a uh, quad and it's even simpler to do that for a triangle. Right? There's going to be except for the only difference being that there are two um, polyline creation actions that we have to achieve, right? We move this way, and we move this way through the points. And since they're organized in a dictionary with two keys, a two-dimensional dictionary, it's very easy for us to use the same offsets and finish off this set of triangles. Okay, um, so sneak peek of uh, something else that we'll, we'll show in a second. So let's go ahead and go and go into our script and make um, our conditional um, polyline creation. So I'm going to save this, and we're moving on to the next file now, which is uh, creating polyline conditional. Okay, so um, let's start by um, modifying our object. We know that we want to be able to define what type of a cell we want to return. So let's zoom in and add a new input. right? And this is going to be cell type. Right? This input is going to receive our cell type. right? And we're going to use an object inside of Grasshopper to define a cell type uh, that's called a value list. So if we go to params, input, value list, this will allow us to specify more than one value in text and give it an associated numerical value. So let's um, right click this and say edit. And we're going to change the value list commands so that the first type is going to be quad. So quad equals zero, right? Our counters or numbers start at zero. Our second type, try, is going to be equal to one. So if we specify quad in this um, value list, it will return the value 0, and vice versa for try, it will return the value 1. So hit OK. Let's also give this a name here. Just like we did our sliders, this is going to be called cell type. All right, so we can just um, right-click and toggle between quad and try. If you click the triangle on the right-hand side of this object, it allows us to just grab the uh, see the list as a uh, list of text. So let's start with a quad and let's supply this to cell type. And here's a little challenge question. Every time we create a new input, we need to give it a specific name and what else do we need to do? Give it a specific type, right? So if this is returning 0, 1, or potentially in the future uh, 2, what do you think our type hint should be? Should it be a string, a boolean, 
or an integer. It's going to be an integer. 0, 1, 2, those are integers. So let's drop that, uh, I'll click that so that this is now defined as an integer. <clears throat> it's not going to affect our script because we're not using this anywhere yet, so it's not going to do anything uh, different. All right. Um, so these aren't keys any longer, these are polylines or our cells. <clears throat> All right, and let's go into um, the script and let's see how we're going to use the cell type. All right, so we open up our script and let's modify our pseudocode so that we can execute the, uh, the conditional uh, test. Right? What we want to do is you see we have create a polyline starting from that location. What we want to do is add some space in here, give ourselves a couple lines. And the idea here is that based on the cell type, create either quad or tri polylines. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a conditional, right? And a conditional statement is another way to uh, control the flow of our script. Right, that says only under certain conditions are we going to uh, actually do this action. Right, so um, the way we use a conditional in uh, Python is going to be through an if statement. If open parentheses our cell type equals equals zero, this is a way to do a comparison. Uh, it's the two equal signs. If you use just one equal sign, you're actually saying that you want cell type 2 to become 0. So equals equals 0. And we finish off uh, this line of code with a colon, just like we do with our for loop. And any statement that's going to control the flow of our script is going to be uh, terminated with a colon in Python. All right, so what that means is that um, all the stuff here that um, we made, uh, we used to make our quad, right? Uh, needs to go over one level. So we'll hit tab. And that will move that block of code in one level so that's inside the if statement. And this is to create a quad starting from the current location. Then the next thing we want to do is um, go back one level to the level of the if. And as an alternative to if the cell type equals zero, if it doesn't, or else, colon, then we're going to create two triangles from the current location, just as we did above, and send the polylines to the output. Okay. So I'm going to need to see a little bit more of my script here. Um, to actually execute this, the best way is actually to copy and paste from the above portion. Right? If we go up to line 28 and we copy and paste, because we typed all this out and it worked, uh, we want to reuse that as much as we can because this can get a little bit or can be easy to um, type with typos, which will cause us headaches. So we'll say that the first thing is going to be um, my try A, so the first one. If we look at our um, slide, we're going to go from IJ, I plus 1J, and I plus 1, J plus 1, then back. So we need to take out just one of the points, right? If we remove this, that should create our first triangle, right? So we go i j, i plus 1j, i plus 1j plus 1, and back to the original. Right? Then we're going to say cells.append my triangle or try a. Close parentheses. Okay? If we select that whole block of code, copy, paste, make sure that our indentions are aligned. And instead, we do my try B, and we go from IJ to I plus 1, J plus 1, 
ij plus 1 and back, right? So in the first case, we're removing this one for triangle A. In the second one, we're removing this one to create triangle B. And we append the cells with either one, right? So if cell type is 0, it's going to do all the quads and just skip this part of the code. If we do cell type equals 1, it will skip this and only do this. So we can use the same list to store our polyline results. So if I hit OK, and now we change our input to quad or try. Now we have the option to very easily move between two sets of triangles. All right, sorry, two sets of polylines that are either quads or triangles, right? And you can keep going with this, right? Um, just as a, um, a little demo, we've included an extra file for you um, that keeps developing the cell types. So instead of just triangles or quads, you can say that you also want to define hexagons, right? And the only thing that you're doing here inside the script is that if the cell type equals 2, which is the number that goes along with hexagons, you're modifying the code a little bit to step through the dictionary in a way that results in your hexagons, right? So now, um, with this one or with the object that we just created, we're starting to create a very robust object that we can uh, reuse in multiple contexts to draw polylines on a surface. Okay.